G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and this is a video on a simple Photoshop painting technique that I use and it helps to, to do things like stay within the lines when you're colouring something in which can be more difficult than it sounds, um, as well as adding things like textures and, and, uh, and shades and highlights without worrying about too many things. So I'm going to jump straight into it. This is a pre-made image I've made, pre-made line work. So I've just got a white background with uh, some simple lines. And if I add, if I, you know, scribble underneath, you can see that they're separate. So I have my line work, which is a transparent layer of nothing, just but those black lines. Now in my approach to adding colors to this, I keep the line layer on the very top and all the colors underneath it. So I'm going to add a new folder between the background and the lines. And I'll call, the, I'll call this cat main. Now, if you can't tell, this is a uh, a ripoff of the cat in the hat image, just in a very cutesy way. I'm going to add another layer. Sorry, when I say layer, I mean folder. So one folder called cat main, another folder called hat main. Haha, <laughs> hat main, cat main. I'm so funny. And then another folder called extras. Now, subdividing into folders just helps things be more organized so that when I can focus on one thing, all the mess is within that one folder and then I'll move on to the next thing and have a clean slate. So we're going to begin by doing the main, the cat main area. So I'm going to create a new layer within this folder and this layer will be dedicated to the color of the cat. So just to demonstrate what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to pick a very irrelevant color. This bright orange is fine. And just paint in this main area. So don't, don't even worry at this point. I, uh, it doesn't matter what color I use. I actually tend to pick ones that are totally different to what the final color will be. Just so, oops, I can tell the difference between them when I'm doing my proper colors. Now I'll show you two ways I, I can go about this. The first is what I'm doing now, which is simply painting around the edges between the lines, like so, which is a little more time consuming, but some people prefer the process. So, la dee da, I'll try not to take too long. Okay, nearly done. I'll just scrub this up. Okay, so that's that way. And then the other way, if you want to just do a, a shortcut, is to go up onto your line layer up here, select your magic wand, and magic wand select the areas you want to fill in. So I've selected those. And now I go back onto my color layer. I go select, modify, expand by about two pixels. And what that does is it gets the selection to bleed over. So you don't have any blank spaces between the lines in the area. And then I can just right click, fill and hit enter for foreground color. And there you go. That's painted exactly what I would have painted anyway. But it saved the, saved the worry of filling in the lines. Okay, now this cat is not going to end up being orange, but I'm just painting the main areas. And I'll show you why in a moment. I'm gonna do the same for the other folders that we've created. So hat main, I'm gonna make a new folder. Sorry, new layer. I'm gonna pick two irrelevant colors. Let's go with a blue. And uh, I'll use my shortcut method. So I'll go on the line layer, selecting that that and that. This is where the red fills are going to be. Go back into my layer in the hat main, select, modify, expand, two pixels, and then I'll fill that with the blue. I know it's going to be end up being red, but for now we just pick something completely random. And then we do the same for the other area. Actually, we probably don't need to but we will. 
Anyways, so I select the remainder, go back on my other layer, and you've got to make sure that you see down here I'm switching between the lines so I can select between those lines. Then I come back, select, modify, expand, bam. And on this new layer, this funky green color, fill that in. There you go. And then in the extras folder, I'm going to make a layer for the eyes and the nose. So same thing as before. I'm going to select in the line layer, the eye fill. I'll go back into this new layer in extras. Select a random color. Let's go this yellow. And then I'll make a new layer for the nose. This bright pink will do. There you go. So now when I zoom out, this is what I've done. I know you're probably a bit confused at this point, but now I can explain why I was doing these things. I use, uh, I don't actually know the name of this technique that I use and somebody who will know this uh, can comment in the comment section below. But I create a new layer on top of the layer that I want to work on. So let's close the other folders and just work in cat main for now. So we have this orange. So I'll hide the other two. And we just have this orange layer that I've created. So I'm going to make one layer on top of that orange layer, a blank layer. And I'm going to hold the Alt key on the keyboard. And you see how that appears when I press the Alt key, that little symbol between those layers, right? So it doesn't appear when I'm on one or the other, but when I hold my mouse over the line dividing these two layers with the Alt key and click, it does this weird thing where it has this arrow point down and I think it's some kind of a masking tool, a quick mask tool. And what that does is it makes it so that anything on this layer that I draw appears exactly within that area that I specified in this orange. So now I can take my cat color, which will be something like this, the fur color, and define where his fur is. So now in the, uh, in the cat in the hat pictures, he's got a white face in the middle and uh, black fur, so I will do so. It's a little something like this. And it just makes it so much easier because you don't have to think about painting within the lines. It's done for you. And it gets even cooler when you want to do things like putting in textures and, and lighting and all that jazz. It's just a really cool little nifty trick that uh, it was shown to me by a user on Newgrounds by the name of Joust, who is just fantastic. And you can check his stuff out on Newgrounds. It's joust.newgrounds.com. Okay. Now, another reason, as you can see here, why I prefer using the quick, the quick shortcut of making that orange layer is you see that little white gap there. There's often little gaps that you miss when you hand paint. Anyway, so I'm doing the tail. I will assume that there's some white on the end of that tail. Just erase things like that. I'm going to keep this fairly simple. I'm not going to go too complicated with this picture. Okay. And next, I'm going to go make, uh, so I'm going to zoom out. Okay, so that's roughly where I want the black to be. Now I'm going to make a new layer. Now you see this is just placed normally. I'm going to drag this between those two. And it's made that automatically one of those alt clicked layers, one of those quick mask layers. And I can go in here and select a, a normal sort of off-white. I don't want it completely white, kind of like a very light cream. And now I can just... Scribble in the rest. So there you go. 
that's that's the basics. That's how I use that in painting between the lines. Now we'll come back to that later. Let's go into hat main and do the same thing. So we have our blue layer here. I'm going to make a layer on top of that. Alt click the line between them. And this one is the red. So I'm going to get my red and scribble in my color. You could just use the, the paint bucket, but bleh. I'm not used to using it for things like this. I did the same thing here with the green. I just made a new layer, alt click, paint it in, and you can see it's already very quickly coming together. And then here with extras, make that appear. So let's make the eye color a nice green. So alt click between those layers, a nice green color. And let's pick that pink nose, new layer, alt click between those two, and a nice uh, let's see, some kind of a mid skin tone. There you go. So this is our, our base color. Now, with all this set up, the way that we've set it up, I'll just save, remember to save, always save. But with the way that this is set it up, adding details and shading and stuff is just phenomenally easy. So I select cat main. So we have our base colors, but I can now add a layer on top of that, alt click to add that to their little stack. And I can find a, a shadow. So let's go dark brown. And let's make it lower the hardness a lot. So it's much softer. And then let's lower the opacity to around 10. And up the brush size. So now we have this kind of airbrush feel. And this is where we do things where we layer by layer add some shadow. So, and you notice I'm tapping a lot more with my pencil because it's such a low opacity, it takes more brush strokes for it to appear. Now this is something that takes use to doing because it, it's not immediately the most simple process. It, it takes an adjustment, it took me an adjustment as well. A little shadow under the hat. Okay. Now get my eraser and I'm going to add some defined shadow lines. Oops. Stuff like that. Yeah, I think that works. Oops. Okay. So I'm fairly happy with that. Now I'm going to add another layer on top of that. Alt click to add it to the list. I'm going to select a very bright yellow. Very, very bright, almost white. And keeping the same brush settings, I'm gonna use this as a highlight. So as I paint that on, it very faintly adds, it's kind of hard to see at first. You can definitely see it on the black. Adds a highlight. So there you go. Now I'm not gonna get get too much more detail than that for now. And I'm going to add one more thing, alt click. And I think the ears need to be a little more pink. So I'm going to go in and grab a pink. And I'm going to use my same brush settings to go in and add the pink to the ears. There you go. So you can see how very quickly working with the shadows and, and highlights can be when you don't have to worry about it keeping in the lines or anything like that. It's actually very, very simple. And we do the same thing with a hat main. So we get our new layer, alt click and add it to the red hat part. Well, let's, let's drop the red section and make a darker red and uh, add our shadows like that. It's very tappy. Same thing with the white. So new layer, alt click and select that and make it a darker selection and add our shadows. I actually think our darker selection needs to be darker. <laughs> a 
It's very, very, very tappy. I'm using a tablet, but this works with other techniques. This is just the, uh, the overall structure that I'm talking about. So the hat main's done. Now our extras layer and other alt clicked layer for the eyes. Select that, get a much darker eye and really paint in the edges there. It needs to be much, much darker. Eyes can have a very, very high contrast without it feeling too weird. Okay, and finally the nose. So alt click that new layer for the nose. I'm gonna do it different for the nose. I'm not gonna do a, a shadow. I'm gonna do a little highlight. So I'm gonna get my new brush, make it much smaller, up the opacity and just add a little nose flick like that. A little highlight. So we've got the rough painting pretty much done. The eyes are feeling a bit bland at the moment. It's just looking like a very default gradient. So I'm going to go back to this eye layer that we have here. Add a new one, alt click. I'm going to get my color and I'm going to get mid darkish green. A much lower brush size, so let's say 10 pixels because this is fairly high resolution. And now I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to just do lots of little stripes like this. Now I'm going to get an even darker green and I'm going to just do little short flicks, little short brush strokes closer to the middle of the eye like this. As you can tell, this is a very quick sort of painting, but it's just to kind of demonstrate the setup. So now when I zoom back out, you can see how that looks. Okay, now the final thing that I want to go through, because there's not too much else to go over, and uh, like I've said, this is a very, very simple example of how I use this technique, but the, the main communication that I wanted to bring out in this is that it is that technique of doing the alt-click layering, so you don't have to worry about getting things in or out of lines and, and things like that. Now, my finishing touch thing that I like to do, and you don't want to overdo this, um, but if you go to, uh, I think it's cgtextures.com, and I'll try and remember to add these things in the description, add links in the description. Um, but I have a few core basic textures that I can use for overlays, and one of them is this plaster. So if I select this plaster texture, and go back into my image, and go to my cat main thing. So I've got this long stack of overlays within this orange layer, which we can break apart bit by bit and see how we put that together. So I'm gonna add another one. Whoops, add another one, alt click. Now when I press control V or paste, you can see that that texture appears within the image. Okay, so I can take that texture Just tweak it to make sure it fits properly. So transform that up. Okay, now I can select here and go to overlay. You see how that appears over there? It make, gives it that kind of rustic look, right? But that is quite strong. So often I bring down the opacity to around 30% or whatnot. And it just adds detail that you didn't necessarily have to add yourself. It is a little bit of a cheat and you don't wanna overdo it. You wanna keep it very subtle. Okay, so the uh, a plaster overlay is a general thing that works. Um, let's do something different for the hat. So let's, uh, again, we have our two parts. We have our red and we have our white. So for our, let, let's find our texture first. Um, I have a, a few in my little folder. So I'm gonna select one. Here we have a denim one. So if I get my denim texture, copy that and paste that. So we can see that, uh, you know, it's not attached to anything at the moment. So when I put that 
on this red layer and alt click it applies only to that red object and I'll go through here and I'll flick I'll quickly peruse through my overlay settings and find one that I think works so overlay works just like the other one so go overlay and again make that much more subtle so let's go around 30% okay so I quite like how that looks and I'm going to duplicate this by uh, you either right click duplicate or you click and drag that down to here this uh, layer thing and it duplicates it and I'm just going to click and drag it up to the top of the the list on the green one and alt click and apply it and it automatically has made it do exactly what I want in the same way for the white layer as it has for the red so we've finished that for hat main and cat main and uh, do we want to do one for eyes we might as well we don't need one for the nose but let's just do a quick one for the eyes so add a, another, another alt click layer to the eye layer and let's use our, uh, our plaster one again so copy paste that and it's already been alt clicked so you can see that when I move it it moves around the eye layer and we just need to move it till we find there's an interesting texture on both eyes so there, that works so let's go overlay and I like keeping it quite strong one thing that I don't like at the moment is that the green looks a little too loud so I'm gonna make one more layer alt click so it only affects this green area I'm gonna make it completely black just paste a completely black layer now as you can see my painting within the lines hasn't worked very well so I'm gonna go down to my very base layer so I'll make everything disappear except for that very first color which is an orange and you can reselect that one if you want but I'm just gonna take my brush make sure it's full opacity full hardness and just paint in here just to make sure that all that area is selected and I'll do the same for the other eye and now when I make all the other layers appear that black layer on top there is no weird line on the edges there are little bits that I've missed but it doesn't really matter for the tutorial so I'm going to select that black layer go down to color and it makes it black and white I'll just zoom out and I'll lower the saturation of that black and white layer until it's at a good strength so if I go to zero opacity you can see that it's uh, completely the strength of the color that was there before but now if I up that a little bit let's say 20% it just softens the strength of that green so I'm fairly happy with how this has turned out so far I hope that uh, you've learned something from this video tutorial uh, this is a technique that I love and, and use quite often um, you can use it also for images without line work so you can see if I hide that it it sort of works but you need to when you do it without line work you need to really focus on making it work without the line work but it is a technique that you don't have to use with line work it, you can make work with different things but it's that alt clicking thing that I'm now addicted to um, yeah, so I, ho I hope you learned a bit. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, keep classy, San Diego. I hope you enjoyed this video. Links are below to download the original files for reference. Remember, if you animate or draw something cool, be sure to share it on Newgrounds.com, the internet's best source for animations, games, art and music. Until next time, See you later.